when you, when you look at the amount of energy you and I consume, it's enormous compared to what a Roman slave would consume. But the amount of our energy we actually put into manufacturing is trivial. Whereas, of course, back in the Roman slaves, they virtually all the energy they got in was the output they'd have to provide to the slave owner. So that's about 100 watts per person. But machinery has gone up radically. And that, of course, is where our productivity has come from, increased amount of energy uh, being you know, harnessed per machine over time. But of course, that means waste. So all these things, if we had that framework, we would never allow the level of energy consumption to reach the level it is because we had the level of waste production. We'd also be acknowledging that. They have a, a non-physical view of the economy. That's It's all stuff you can write on a whiteboard with you know, terms labour and capital, and, but energy is not one of the terms they even look at. And this is, a, it's a mindset that I trace right back to Adam Smith, in fact. Uh, because if you go before Smith, you'll find you had the physiocrats. And the physiocrats are Canet, Cantillon, uh, uh, there's you know, quite a few others. Uh, they argue that all wealth comes from the soil. But what they fundamentally meant was all wealth comes from the sun. And if you imagine you're like an, the agricultural society of France, which was the main location that developed the physiocratic theory, uh, you plant one corn, one one seed corn, you get a thousand pieces of corn back, and you simply sit there and watch it. It'll happen over time, even if you barely do anything with the soil. Um, so this became obvious to them that what what was causing the wealth in human society is what they literally called the free gift of nature. Now, in that sense, the free gift of nature that predates the understanding we have of the laws of the conservation of energy. And they're aware of it. They're saying we're simply exploiting energy we find in the universe, turning it into useful work. But then along comes Smith and says, oh, no, be living in Scotland, industrial, but you know, hardly agricultural Scotland, he couldn't accept that labor, land was the source of value. He said labor is the source of value. So you then had the classical school of thought coming along. Now, Marx then took that and said labor is the only source of value. Therefore, labor should get the entire rate of profit. And the neoclassicals come along and say, no, both labor and capital contribute to output. So there's a labor gets its marginal product and capital gets its marginal product. And that's all just. We've wasted 250 years arguing about the wrong stuff. The physiocrats were right. We only have an advanced economy because we exploit free energy and all we're paying is the cost of extraction and therefore those enormous differentials you mentioned earlier come about. Largely because, as I said, the, the, it became part of the ideology of the contest between workers and capitalists over the distribution of income. When Marx turned the classical school, the labor theory of value, uh, against capitalism, then in the 1870s, that was when neoclassical economics, which came out, which said, no, it's it's the marginal productivity that determines the income. Um, both factors of production, labor and capital, get what they deserve. So the whole thing was seen, well, productivity is coming out of three elements, labor, capital and technology. Now, on, when they tried to then quantify that, and this is probably in the 1950s and 60s with Robert Solo, uh, they have what they call the Solo residual, that when they looked at how change in GDP comes, apart, comes about, it had very little relationship to change in labor or change in capital, it all came of change in technology. And so this A term, which was undifferentiated, became the magic source that enabled growth to occur over time. And that was uh, if you asked economists about it, they said that's human ingenuity. Now, they didn't see that, yes, there is the ingenuity there, but if it wasn't fossil fuels to harness, we wouldn't be producing this volume of output.